Here we go. Last video for the day. We've got supply already. We talked about it two days ago. We've got demand all the way from Monday. We're going to put them together. We're going to talk about what happens when you have supply and demand both on the same graph and when they're interacting, which is what happens in all markets all the time. In fact, we're going to see what happens when different markets interact with other markets because they're all interrelated because that's how a real economy works. We don't usually just talk about demand or supply for one product in isolation. Okay, so we're going to do this before you do a simulation. You're going to work on it later today and you're going to work on it tomorrow. Some of you are going to be uh, consumers of wheat, so you're the buyers, and the others are going to be the farmers. You're going to be the suppliers or producers of wheat. Now, I'm going to do this now to introduce this. Whoops. This may be a little bit confusing. So uh, the idea of the simulation is that you guys then role play and enact it out and then it is um, makes a little more sense. So here we go. This time, we've got Yankee tickets, because we're going to be talking about the Yankees in a minute here. We've got supply of Yankee tickets. We're talking about 30,000, 40,000 different tickets, and the Yankees really like to sell them at a high price. And we've got demand for Yankee tickets. At a high price, not very many people want to choose that high quantity, uh, but as the tickets get lower and lower and lower, well, in terms of price, more and more people are willing to go to this game. Well, at some point, the supply and demand curves need to intersect, and that's what they do right here. And so we call this the equilibrium so this is quantity it's no longer quantity demanded or supplied because in fact it's both because we've got both graphs going on here so this is quantity demanded and supplied in fact this is the number of tickets yankee tickets that are sold and this is the equilibrium price this is where they intersect so this is the price of yankee tickets equilibrium price equilibrium quantity. Okay. Really quickly, we're going to look at what kind of an event could possibly happen with anchovies that would reduce the demand for Yankee tickets. Why in the world are Yankee tickets, baseball game tickets, and anchovies related? We'll find out in a minute. But if something were to occur to reduce the demand, we would have demand shifting right? But supply doesn't shift. The quantity supplied is going to change. So the price is going to change, and it's going to go from this higher equilibrium price and this higher quantity to a lower price and a lower quantity of tickets. And two things happened. One was the shift in demand. It actually decreased overall at all prices. Demand went down. People did not want to go to Yankees games anymore. You can see why. But supply did not shift. We still have Yankee Stadium. The seats are still there. They're still playing baseball games. No shift in supply, but the quantity of seats supplied, simply the number of butts sitting in those seats, did decrease. Quantity supplied decreased down to that point. Okay, So that's what can happen when uh, one supply or demand shifts and the other one just moves along the line. Okay. We have a hurricane. And we did in the 1980s, and this really did happen. So we have the market for anchovies. This is the quantity. We're going to do a lot of these graphs, so bear with me. I hope you can see the board. I know it's kind of glary and bright in here. In fact, why don't I go turn off the lights? I should have done that in the first video. We'll see if it helps. What do you think? I look better. Sorry I didn't do that earlier in the week. Here we go. Anchovies. Quantity. We've got the price. We've got demand. We've got supply. There's a hurricane out in the ocean and it destroys the anchovy population amongst other things. What happens to the market for anchovies? People still hate anchovies across the board so nothing changes there. But the supply of anchovies is incredibly decreased because it's hurricane. So supply is going to shift to the left. What happens to equilibrium price for anchovies? Well, it used to be here. It has gotten more expensive. The quantity of anchovies has increased. Now, you might say, who cares? Nobody likes anchovies. I don't care what the price is. I don't care who these people are that are consuming it. 
I didn't care in the first place. Well, that may be true, and it may be true for a lot of people, but that's not actually what anchovies are predominantly used for. Anchovies predominantly are used as a fertilizer in fields for farmers. Okay, well, what's an alternative or a complement or a, sub a substitute fertilizer? Well, it's soybean. Price of soybeans. We have the quantity of soybeans. And the supply of soybeans. Demand. Now, farmers usually wanted anchovies because they're pretty cheap. They occur out in the ocean. We bring them in, we put them on the fields, and uh, we fertilize our products. All of a sudden, it's more expensive. So, if these are, what are they? That's right. Substitute products. You could either use anchovies or soybeans. You don't need to use both to fertilize your fields. One, Substitute got more expensive. What's going to happen to your demand for soybeans? Well, you're right. In fact, the demand is going to increase. You're going to want more of these because they're cheaper than the anchovies. Demand shifts. Supply does not. The quantity supplied, however, does increase from this point up to this point. This is actually going to increase the price of soybeans, too. This is kind of sensical. We know that now fertilizer is going to be expensive, whether you're using soybeans or anchovies, because a disaster happened in the market. And because less people are uh, purchasing the more expensive anchovies, more people are going to buy the soybeans, the quantity increases. The price goes up, soybeans goes up. Okay, you're a farmer. You've only got 1,000 acres. You can grow a combination of crops. But all of a sudden, do you want to grow, grow soybeans? You do, because as a supplier, a high price is good for you. If you were purchasing the soybeans, you might not like it, but you're the one selling it, so you say, great, I'm going to actually produce a lot more soybeans. And instead of growing corn, which is our next market, you are going to grow soybeans. So we have the quantity of corn produced, and we have the price of corn. And we have the demand for corn. We have the supply for corn. All right. What's going to happen to now, in this case, the supply of corn produced? Well, we're saying farmers would prefer to grow soybeans to get the higher price, so they are going to actually supply less corn. So they've got their acres. They're just going to put less corn in the ground, so there's going to be less supply overall. This is one of those things. It's other products. It's a substitute product, so instead of using their farm to grow this product, they grow that one. Supply of corn goes down. Well, there used to be a lot of corn produced. Now there's less. People are growing soybeans instead. So because there's less corn and people still like the corn and a lot of products are made with corn, well, the price of corn is going to go up. So we've got the price of everything going up as a result of these anchovies. All right. What is one of those things that corn is used to produce? Well, a lot of things, but in this instance, we like to use it to feed our Pigs. We can say either pigs or pork, and we will say the quantity of pigs produced, and we say the price of pigs or the price of pork. We have demand. We have supply. How are pigs and corn related? Well, the corn goes into the pigs, and the pigs become a product, for better or worse. Uh, it happens. That makes corn an input of pigs to make pork. Okay. So the cost of the input, corn, went up. So now all of a sudden to farm or raise or however you want to talk about it, pigs, you have to spend more money feeding them. That makes supply decrease. The cost of input goes up. It's more expensive to produce pigs. Supply decreases. Demand. People still love pork. They love pork products. In fact, we're going to talk about hot dogs in a second. Demand doesn't change, but well, the price of pork does, so the quantity demanded does change. We go from this price of pork up to this price of pork, higher price. Because of that raised price and decreased supply, we have less pigs being produced overall. All right, I'm going to skip one of these graphs. Same thing is going to happen to the hot dog market. In fact, I'll draw it really quickly. But again, uh, corn goes into pigs, pigs go into hot dogs or something like that. So in fact, if you have supply and demand for hot dogs, same thing is going to happen. It's an input. It's going to reduce supply, so you have quantity, supply, and demanded, and price, and you have supply decreasing. 
that is going to raise the equilibrium price of hot dogs. It's going to lower the quantity of hot dogs produced. Hot dogs, pigs, corn, soybeans, anchovies. Are we getting closer to Yankee Baseball Game Stadium? Yes, I think so. I can smell it. Here we go. When I go to baseball games, I get two things. Because I'm a teacher, I'm going to say soda instead of beer right now. But hot dogs and beer, or hot dogs and soda, is what most Americans going to baseball games like to consume. So, what's going to happen to the soda and beer markets at baseball games? Price, quantity, supply, demand. Okay, hot dogs are more expensive. How are hot dogs and soda or beer related? Well, I said they go together. People usually buy them together at the same stand. That makes them what kind of products? That's right. They're complements. They go well together. So, more expensive hot dogs. Are you going to buy more soda and beer? Are you going to get 76,000 uh, milliliters of soda and zero hot dogs? No, you're not going to just get more soda and less hot dogs. If you're getting less hot dogs, you're probably going to get less soda as well. They go so well together. If you don't have one, you don't need the other. The demand for soda and beer is going to go down. There's less demand. Supply isn't shifted except that there's a smaller quantity of soda and beer supplied because people are simply buying less of it. Demand has shifted. This is going to result probably in some lower prices, which is nice, but nobody really cares because they don't want all the soda and beer without their hot dogs. Okay. Vendors. So this is the market at baseball games. Price. Quantity. Supply. Demand. All right. These vendors say, I don't want to sell hot dogs at baseball stadiums when the price is incredibly high and nobody wants to buy it. And the same thing with soda and beer. So all of these vendors say, look, I am great at selling food, but I can't sell it at a Yankee Stadium. I would rather take my food selling skills and go sell some other kind of food instead of hot dogs that is a better price. And then I'll probably be able to sell my soda and beer too. So a lot of the vendors simply moved out of the stadiums and opened like food trucks or restaurants or something else so the supply, the number of vendors, simply decreased at baseball games. Again, this is a, one of those other products. So instead of growing corn, we can grow soybeans. Instead of selling food at baseball games, we can go sell some other food somewhere else and make more money because people want to buy it. But that means that the vendors that are still at the baseball games, well, there's not very many of them, right? The quantity has dramatically decreased, but the price has increased. Okay. Here we are at the end. We've got Yankee tickets. We've got the supply of Yankee tickets. It's not going to change, right? We still have Yankee Stadium. It's still got, whatever, 75,000 seats. This is the price of tickets. This is the quantity of tickets. Just because we have 75,000 seats doesn't mean they're all going to be purchased. Somewhere in the middle is the number that will be purchased. Now, anchovies and baseball, who cares? Soybeans and corn and prices, who cares? Pigs, don't go to baseball games unless you're St. Paul Saints, at which uh, point, well, you have pigs every inning running around the bases. Hot dogs, now I care. It's more expensive. Soda and beer, well, it's less expensive, but who wants it when you can't get the hot dogs? And the vendors are gone. So here we are with tickets to Yankee baseball games. Baseball is boring. Nobody wants to go and watch a baseball game. The only reason anybody goes to a baseball game is an excuse to drink soda and beer with hot dogs. And if you can't get your soda and your beer at hot dogs at, uh, excuse me, if you can't get your soda and beer and hot dogs at a baseball game, or you can, but only at incredibly high prices, do baseball hot dogs and soda and beer go together well? Yes, they complement. If the price of everything is skyrocketing, how are you going to feel about Yankee tickets? Your demand is going to go through the floor. Nobody wants to go to baseball without hot dogs, beer, and soda. Demand decreases. Yankee Stadium is still there, but it is empty. Nobody is there. 
the price of tickets go down, nobody wants to go. There we go. A hurricane in the ocean destroying the anchovy market. All of these changes and shifts in supply and quantity demanded, etc., etc., etc. Equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity. All of them are changing. All of these are interrelated. That's how we get to the Yankee baseball stadium. This is complicated. You're going to do the market in wheat. And between these two scenarios, I hope you have a good understanding of how supply, demand, things that shifted, quantity, price, are all interrelated. And if not, well, it's going to be the weekend soon. You can just have a rest and come back next week, and we'll try it all again. Best of luck.